Hello, Assalamualaikum. My name is Zaman from AGC and today I would like to present about feeding intervention. Now let me start with uh, oral motor development associated with eating skills. Uh, sucking, drinking, biting and chewing are closely related to the child's overall motor development. Oral motor patterns progress along with the child's changing nutritional needs. This increase the motive for self-feeding and increasingly better ability to communicate. Now, coordination of sucking, swallowing and breathing. The sucking reflex is present in the fetus and is the main method of feeding during the first 10 months of life. There are two types of sucking reflexes which is non-nutritive and nutritive. Non-nutritive usually happens when a child is sucking on a pacifier and his sole aim is to calm rather than feeding. And nutritive is usually happens when a child is sucking on a source of nutrition. And non-nutritive usually has a fast rhythmic movement and happen at about 2 sucks per second, that's the speed. And nutritive is rhythmic but is marked by dynamic bursts with pauses and uh, but uh, we let the child to breathe and relax between uh, sucking bursts. There are two key factors that determine the ability to feed, which is sucking rhythm and the type of suction that the infants achieve and sustain over time. Both suction and compression are very needed for the liquid expression. The amount of liquid consumed during a meal time is determined by three factors, which is uh, speed, sucking speed, and force of uh, compression and uh, feeding time length. Each infant has a different sucking pattern that may range from feeding to feeding depending on factors such as exhaustion and hunger. Now, stages of oral patterns. A toddler's first sucking pattern is called suckling. During suckling, the tongue moves in and out of the jaw, opens and closes, coordinating with the tongue movement. A suckling is the main sucking pattern for the first four months of life. Usually, a one-month-old hungry child achieves one suck per swallow. But as the child becomes more satisfied, so he or she will decrease the suction force and the rate also will decrease to about two to three sucks per swallow. When the child is uh, 4 months old, the tongue begins to move up and down which shows the signs of true sucking. The child is also able to take in 20 or more sucks from the breast or bottle before facing. So as following occurs periodically and with no pause and breathing slows during sucking happens within the sucking sequences. Mm. At the age of 6 months, the child shows strong up and down tongue movement with minimal jaw exhaustion during sucking uh, which also increases the jaw stability and gives way for a greater tongue movement control. At uh, 9 months old, the child continues to suck from the bottle nipple by applying strong patterns of sucking. At 12 months, most of the infants transition full time from bottle to cup for drinking during meal time. Infants usually at this age are usually introduced to a cup, usually a sipper cup with a spout. With the cup, the child will attempt to uh, use a sucking pattern so the jaw continues to move alternately and the tongue moves in and out uh, uh, in the mouth. The child uh, stops to uh, swallow or breathe after one or two to three sucks from the cup. At this age, uh, tongue tip elevation during swallowing happens for the first time. He or she bites on the cup rim for jaw stabilization and the three suck swallow sequence happens during cup drinking. By the age of 15 to 18 months, the child has amazing sucking, swallowing and breathing coordination. At the age of 24 months, the child can drink from the cup completely, perfectly. He or she uses both alternating tongue movements and tongue tip elevation. Biting and chewing. A child's first biting and chewing movements are reflexive. At the age of 4 to 5 months, the child applies a rhythmic common phasic bite and release pattern on most of the items placed on an example like toy, biscuit and many more. And the jaw usually moves up and down rather than sideways and diagonally. When this pattern happens smoothly and frequently, this is, it is known as munching. Munching is defined by vertical jaw movement and alternating tongue movement and allows the child to completely eat soft foods that melt quickly. By the age of 7 to 8 months, the child begins to use some diagonal jaw movement when the food texture requires the jaw to move both horizontally and vertically. The child continues to use the same pattern when eating a biscuit. <coughs> when the child receives food on a spoon, <coughs> the upper lip uh, cleans it from the spoon, which made the lips active during chewing. And at the age of 12 months, rotary chewing movements develop and made possible by the increasing stability and jaw control. The tongue is also actively involved in chewing. And at the age of 18 months, the child shows well-organized rotary uh, chewing, 
which means the child is also able to chew soft meats and more the child also can control and sustain bites and the tongue becomes more mobile and effectively moves food within the mouth at the age of 24 months the child is able to eat most meats meats and vegetables the child can sustain the bite and can easily bite hard foods at this age usually the circular jaw movements that define mature chewing are present and the tongue successfully transfer the food alterna- alternatingly by using a, a rolling movement self feeding children are often keen on feeding themselves at around usually 6 uh, months old the child may bring his or hands to the bottle and try to hold it but shouldn't be uh, encouraged should be given the bottle because the child lacks the uh, adequate motor skills to remove the bottle if choking happens children who are older than 8 months old uh, are actively hold the bottle but still their self feeding should be uh, monitored to ensure enough intake because they tend to lose focus and their initial hunger after their initial hunger has been fulfilled and typically finger feeding develops at a faster rate by about 8 months old when the child shows a radial digital grasp which position the food for entry into the mouth from the age of 9 to 13 months the child develops better sitting posture proper sitting balance and more which will improve the self feeding skills by the age of 12 months finger feeding is usually a preferred task and occurs uh, concurrently with few psychosocial changes that signal the child's rising desire for autonomy Children younger than 1 years old will grapple, wave and bang spoons during feeding. At around the age of 1 years old, the child shows an understanding of the spoon's function by poking at the football with the spoon and bringing it to the mouth. Full spoon feeding competency usually occurs between the age of 15 to 18 months when the child brings a spoon with sticky food which example is yogurt into the mouth with minimal spillage. The child also holds the spoon in a pronated gross grasp and applies uh, primary shoulder movement to bring it to the mouth. By the age of 24 months, the child spoon feeds without any spillage and holds the spoon in the radial fingers with the forearm supinated and will be able to obtain the food effectively to place it in the mouth. Now coming to drinking. Drinking children as young as 6 months may show eagerness in drinking from the cup, but cup drinking skills uh, don't happen fully till the age of 12 months. There are several uh, cups uh, types that can aid the child's gaining of cup drinking skills. The child will first use a cup with lead and spout with by the age of 24 months they may use the 4 to 6 ounce cup without a lead. At the age of 2 years the ability to drink from the straw will emerge. The usage of straw requires good lip seal and the strong suction to bring the liquid inside the mouth and not only that also need the cognitive uh, skills to figure out how to use the straw properly. Food refusal and selectivity. According to the uh, experience of uh, or occupational therapists, some children are picky eaters, selective eaters who tend to refuse food due to many factors such as food allergies and more. Children who refuse food tend to benefit from environmental adaptations uh, such as consistent eating locations and more. These strategies will promote hunger cues, limit the intake of unhealthy foods and more. Interventionists may also consider interventions to decrease oral sensitivity and improve oral sensory exploration skills. Also, they may apply behavioral treatment approach within a broad intervention plan to decrease food refusal and selectivity. Uh, which uh, a behavioral approach may include positive reinforcements when a child tastes a non-preferred food and more. Okay. Coming to delayed transition to textured food. Children who have uh, oral sensory and motor issues are uh, cannot to progress to age appropriate food textures. Interventionists may apply uh, non nutritive oral motor tasks to decrease hypersensitivity and boost oral motor coordination to address this issue. And children also may practice chewing foods uh, which is inside the mesh feeding bag to experience repetitive chewing with a risk for choking to be reduced. And also, therapists can also provide reinforcement for the child's participation in challenging new tasks. Like, for example, when a child is able to take a few uh, small bites of textured food safely outside meal times which is not including not in lunch time or breakfast and more therapists may begin to include this new skill slowly within the meals but if you instantly increasing the demands within the meal times before the child has enough motor skills may affect the child's oral intake now coming to delayed transition from bottle to cup there are many reasons on why a child may struggle to transition from breast of bottle feeding to cup drinking. The causes can be either poor jaw stability, oral control or pharynx coordination to control an unanticipated liquid bolus. When the child is orally hypersensitive, he or she may dislike the periodic touch of the cup on the outside of the lip. Children with hypersensitivity also may seek the calming sensory input that comes from sucking during bottle feeding. 
Interventionists may assist the children to get ready for cup drinking tasks by engaging on jaw stability, lip closure, and many more, and also provide similar sensory input to bottle feeding uh, for children with sensory defensiveness. And a spouted cup uh, may initially make it easier for the child to suck the liquid. And furthermore, the usage of the cut out cup may assist the child to reduce head and neck extension and allows the interventionist to observe the uh, liquid's flow and the child's mouth movement during the drinking task. <coughs> and therapists also can provide external jaw support in which the therapist's index finger is underneath the lower mandibular bone and the thumb is placed on the anterior chin. And which imp implementing jaw support while sitting beside the child with the arm around the back of the child's neck may allow the uh, therapist to give extra support for the child to control enough aid alignment during drinking tasks. And children often bite on the cup rim to obtain extra jaw support. They may also rest their tongue on the rim of the cup for extra sensory input. This pattern should decrease gradually as the child becomes more experienced in managing liquids from a cup. And thank you very much and goodbye.